Now, if a 482 adjustment affects that calculation of, infect, of effectively connected income, it uh, 482 applies. So, well, look, okay. The language yeah. is very broad in, in this section, but... You're right. Is... It's broad and intended to be broad. So let me give you another example. What does 482 do exactly? Well, we'll get to that. First, we're trying to say, you know, when do we... Uh, when do we, uh, in a sense, see that it might be relevant? Let's say that we have a U.S. individual shareholder up here. And let's say that there's two uh, subsidiaries. Uh, let's say that there's no subpart F income. Let's say they're heavy in fixed assets, so there's no guilty. There's only other E and P earned down at these levels. Now assume that the IRS, for whatever reason, looks at the income and transactions uh, between and in X and Y, and determines, let's say there, uh, let's say for example, there's been a sale of products from X to Y and the price is 100 too high. Uh, the price of the products being sold by X to Y is 100 too high. That means there's 100 too much income in X and 100 too little income in Y. So as a result of this, the IRS makes a transfer pricing adjustment and adjust the pricing, which causes 100 of additional income in Y and 100 less income in X. Now, does this affect uh, the taxation of X and Y in the United States? Uh, no, it doesn't, as long as uh, we're, of course, making the assumption that X and Y uh, uh, are not conducting any U.S. trade or business, uh, have no effectively connected income, this won't affect the direct U.S. taxation of X and Y. It will, of course, affect the earnings and profits within X and Y, uh, and that can affect the character of distributions to the individual that X and Y make either actual distributions or, as we'll cover in a moment, uh, possible deemed distributions. We've said that this adjustment of 100 that the IRS has made doesn't affect the actual tax obligations of X and Y. But let's look at the individual. What about the individual? Now, notice that because the IRS has made an adjustment, okay, there's 100 more income in Y, 100 less income in X, but what about the actual cash, so to speak, that's in the two companies? While the IRS has said that there needs to be 100 more income in Y, the cash that relates so to speak, to that 100 of income, is still back in X. As a practical matter, the cash will, under normal circumstances, stay in X because there's no transaction or other mechanism by which X can transfer to Y that additional 100 to in essence, reflect the pricing adjustment which the U.S. IRS makes. Unless uh, there is such a mechanism, there's now an accounting mismatch. The E and P that's in Y is reflective of the adjustment that the IRS has made. The E and P in X is uh, lower, of course, by that 100 to reflect that adjustment, but the cash is still in X. So 
The point is that accounting and transfer pricing adjustments have to be in sync. So if there's a mismatch, well, how do we correct it in a tax sense? Uh, the individual at the top has effectively transferred 100 from uh, Y to X. Well, how did he do that? Well, the only way that that can happen under U.S. tax concepts is that if Y has made a distribution with respect to its stock to the individual shareholder who then makes a contribution to capital to X, which is uh, holding the cash. So we have a deemed distribution made by Y to uh, the individual, a contribution to capital. The deemed distribution to the extent of earnings and profits within Y will be a dividend, will be taxable as such uh, to the individual. The contribution to capital of X will increase the individual's basis in the shares, uh, his cost basis in the shares of uh, X, but of course that's not a deductible amount that offsets the income from the deemed distribution. So this is the kind of result uh, that can occur and is a reason why the IRS might, in a case like this, potentially look at the transfer pricing between two non-U.S. taxpayers, X and Y, uh, and 482 is relevant because that, uh, that mismatch on accounting, uh, the, the accounting for the cash and the transfer pricing adjustment that the IRS makes uh, that has an effect on you on the U.S. taxation of the individual shareholder. We will cover this a bit later, but just in case any viewer of this podcast wants to look for it, uh, there is also the ability to create uh, a receivable so that at least for U.S. tax purposes, cash can be transferred. Uh, between X and Y uh, as an alternative to this deemed distribution and uh, contribution to capital. Uh, see in this regard uh, regulation section 1.482-1G3 and revenue procedure 99-32.